And so it took until 2020 uh, for someone to report the very simple experiment that I talked about, which is if you just take some cells and you put them in a lactate solution, you have massively increased SCD1 levels because SCD1 is caused by being in anabolic mode, having a high ratio of NADH to NAD+, having lots of acetyl-CoA, and having low SIRT1 activity. Today I'm gonna to talk again about my favorite enzyme, SCD1. SCD1 is a fascinating enzyme because all it does is it takes saturated fats and it inserts a single double bond and it turns them into monounsaturated fats. SCD1 is a fascinating enzyme because in 2002, it was reported that mice who didn't have SCD1, mice lacking SCD1, okay, so they can't make unsaturated fat. All their fat uh, that they make ends up being saturated and they get some unsaturated fat from their diet. Um, but those mice that only have saturated fat are hypermetabolic. They have a metabolic rate that's about 40% higher than normal mice. They're protected from obesity. They're protected from diabetes, right? So having your body fat primarily composed of saturated fat prevents diabetes and prevents obesity. At least it does if you're a mouse. In obese humans, the more obese you are, the more SCD1 that you express in your muscle tissue. So there's this very strong direct correlation between SCD1 levels in humans and BMI or level of obesity. So this SCD1 is crucial and seemingly in humans. So I just introduced this concept in my last video uh, called the onion of life. And the idea of it is that there are a lot of uh, life forms that evolved 3.7 billion years ago at the dawn of life on earth. And all of those organisms use a couple basic things to know whether or not they're in anabolic or building mode versus catabolic or kind of breaking down mode. The anabolic mode means you're in the reduced form. You have lots of NADH. You have a lot of acetyl-CoA around um, and you have low sirtuin levels. Sirtuin is a deacetylase enzyme. Um, acetyl-CoA, when it's high, will stick onto enzymes and turn them on or off depending, and CERT1 will come along and remove those acetyl groups from enzymes and let them uh, go back about their jobs. Um, and this acetylation happens in anabolic mode. Um, and in catabolic mode, deacetylation, deacetylation happens because CERT, the sirtuin enzymes, especially CERT1 is the mammalian sirtuin, is activated by NAD+. It requires NAD+, to do its job. So, so when you're over here, you have acetylated enzymes. That's kind of the hallmark of, of anabolic storing mode. Um, and the hallmark of catabolic mode is your, your, your enzymes are not acetylated. When we think about SCD1, we say, okay, well, so SCD1 is clearly an anabolic enzyme. It is necessary for storing fat. Um, and so one might assume, uh, very broadly thinking about the onion of life, that probably, perhaps, um, SCD1 is activated by acetylation, uh, which is to say it's activated, it's activated by being in anabolic mode, right? Uh, versus, and it's probably not activated when cells are in catabolic mode. And so in 2014, this paper came out called Alpha Lipoic Acid Reduces Fatty Acid Esterification and Lipogenesis and adipocytes from overweight and obese subjects. So this study, they took liver cells from obese humans, and these were grown in tissue culture. So this is not, they didn't uh, give these humans a supplement. They did this in tissue culture, caveat. However, what it showed is that alpha lipoic acid, what alpha lipoic acid does is it oxidizes NADH and it converts it back to NAD+. Alpha lipoic acid is an oxidant. It oxidizes the NADH pool. When you oxidize the NADH pool, you go into catabolic mode. And sure enough, the alpha lipoic acid caused a large reduction in SCD1 levels. So if you oxidize the NAD pool and put the cells back into catabolic mode, uh, you're gonna reduce SCD1 levels. Furthermore, in 20, uh, 20, December of 2020, I believe it was, 
This paper came out called HCAR1 slash MCT1 regulates tumor ferroptosis through the lactate-mediated AMP kinase SCD1 activity and its therapeutic implications. Now, it's a kind of a boring title, but I, I want to give uh, props to the people who did this research, and I want you guys to be able to find these papers if you want to look them up. Um, in this paper, what they did was, it's a paper about cancer, and they took some cancer cells, and they just incubated them in a solution that contained lactate. And I've talked about lactate before in these videos. What lactate does, there's an enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase, and cells can actually use lactate for fuel. And what they can do is they can pull in lactate and they can actually convert NAD plus to NADH. And then they can export the lactate as pyruvate. And so what that does is if you give cells only lactate, they'll continue to do this and it will build up NADH levels and it'll deplete NAD plus levels. And so what they found, and so another way to say this is that lactate puts the cells into reductive stress, which is also the anabolic side of the onion, right? And, and again, <laughs> this, this anabolic versus catabolic divide has been true for 3.7 billion years now. It is true in every single cell always. Uh, this, is the oldest, this is the oldest conserved program of life. All cells do this. Anyway, the, um, so giving the cells lactate pushes them into anabolic mode and it increases SCD1 levels by 500%. Okay, so, <laughs> and, and I want to say that the, uh, the alpha lipoic acid decreased um, SCD1 levels by something like two thirds. It's a lot, right? And so very clearly, SCD1 levels are directly caused by an being in anabolic mode, having a lot of NADH, having acetylated enzymes. And they're prevented by being in catabolic mode and oxidizing the NAD pool. And that has been shown in 2014 and 2021. Um, and I, I point it out because part of the reason that I drew this onion is, is I want to talk about how in molecular biology and people look at biology, it's very confusing. There's all these connections and they're like, what's going on? You, you have to take it back to an evolutionary perspective. You have to think what happened first because these, these core programs that develop in cells, they always stay the same. As new things happen, as oxygen enters the atmosphere, as eukaryotes evolve, as animals then later evolve out of eukaryotes, you layer on sort of levels of control mechanisms. But the core, the core thing that drives life never changes. And that's the point of the onion. And so what's really interesting about the history of SCD1 research is it was all done by molecular biologists. And they're not necessarily thinking in terms of the onion. They're thinking of which proteins interact with each other. What are genetic models that maybe show us what the proteins do? Uh, is this protein phosphorylating that protein? How are the messages moving around the proteins? And they're all kind of living out here. They're living in, in, in signal conduction world and gene expression world. And a lot of these things are on the edges, but they're, they're often not focused on these basic biochemical things that actually control the cells, right? And, and the cell's decision about what to do in any given scenario. And so uh, interestingly, like I said, the SCD1 was first found to make the hypermetabolic mice back in 2002. Then there was a decade of hard molecular biology. And this paper called Hormonal and Nutritional Regulation of SCD1 Gene Expression came out in 2011. And they have this whole model. Um, and there's like 10 different transcription factors. They have this, this image of the, of the promoter region of the SCD1, which is the part of the DNA that tells the animal when and when not to make the, the enzyme. And they got like 10 different transcription factors that are all interacting with the promoter. And they're looking at insulin signaling and they're looking at leptin signaling and they're, they're staying way out here on the edges of the onion. And, and then you look at this paper and you read it and, and, and you're just sort of left with like, a, I, I don't know what to think, right? Like, how does this all work? Um, and interestingly, even back in, uh, I think 2003, it was reported that SREB P1, which is the main transcription factor that that even at the time was known, even at the time of this paper, 
and well before this paper really, um, was known to be the main activator of SCD1, uh, it had been reported in 2003 that Streb P1 could be acetylated, right? That's, that's anabolic mode in the cell. And then in 2010, a year before the paper came out, it was reported that in fact, CERT1, <laughs> right, which is on the catabolic side, actually deacetylates Streb P1 and turns it off. But somehow, <laughs> since that paper was done by a molecular biologist, they missed all that because they're not thinking often about the, the basic biochemistry and how things work at the bottom. And so, and so it took until 2020 uh, for someone to report the very simple experiment that I talked about, which is if you just take some cells and you put them in a lactate solution, you have massively increased SCD1 levels because SCD1 is caused by being in anabolic mode, having a high ratio of NADH to NAD+, having lots of acetyl-CoA, and having low CERT1 activity. Now, having said all that, I want to talk about this. This is one of the papers that I always go back to. It's called SCD1 regulates the AMP kinase CERT1 pathway and histone acetylation through changes in adenine nucleotide metabolism in skeletal muscle. And uh, James Natambi is uh, on this paper, and I love James Natambi's work. He's done a lot of the SCD1 work, and I'm picking on him in this video. Um, but this paper, in, in I think that was 2019, they finally put it all together, and they realized that, in fact, the way that SCD1 works is that when they delete it from mice, uh, it, it increases the NAD plus to NADH ratio. And so it pushes mice into catabolic mode. That's what it's doing. It's oxidizing the NADH pool. It's presumably doing that, and there probably are other reasons, but one of the main reasons it's doing that is that saturated fat make more reactive oxygen species, ROS. ROS get cleaned up by NADPH, and it oxidizes the NADPH pool and pushes the entire cell balance into catabolic mode. Um, and the thing is, it took, it took uh, 17 years between the first paper of realizing that SCD1 made things hypermetabolic to finally realizing that, oh, the way SCD1 works is via affecting NADH to NAD plus levels. And I think that's really interesting. And it sort of shows you, you know, where the, how the molecular biologist thinks about the problem and how I think we need to have more of an evolutionary and biochemical view of how all these chemicals work because that lactate experiment is real easy to do. The alpha lipoic acid experiment is real easy to do. Those are two easy experiments that you can do that if they'd have done it back in 2004, right? It would have given them like, oh, I see like the thing controlling SCD1 is is in fact whether or not the cell is anabolic or catabolic and everything else is just kind of details. But instead, they focused on finding all of these details uh, and published a very confusing paper in 2011. And finally, in 2019, um, they're starting to get it. Um, and so, you know, I know people watch these videos thinking, what can I do? Well, I've already given you a big hint. Um, alpha lipoic acid oxidizes the NADH pool and that helps you helps put you back into catabolic mode. Um, I actually sell it on my blog. If you go to fireinabottle.net and click the shop um, button at the top, um, you can purchase some ALA uh, as it's called. You can get it in a lot of other places, but obviously it helps out the blog and uh, helps me keep being able to do this research um, if you buy it from me. I've also talked a lot about something called uh, calcium pyruvate. Um, there's other forms of pyruvate out there that you could also use. They tend to be more expensive, but what pyruvate does is the exact opposite of what lactate does. So if you put uh, pyruvate, uh, or if you consume pyruvate, if it's in your blood, cells will take it up, they'll convert it to lactate, and what that does is it, um, it takes an NADH and it converts it back to NAD+. So pyruvate also helps you to oxidize your NAD pool and put your cells back into catabolic mode. Uh, so those are two ideas. I'm gonna have a lot more ideas along these lines. Um, keep checking in. 
uh, with fireinabottle.net and this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.